So PMX Lift was created two years ago, uh, created with the premise of utilizing a data-led approach for advanced video. The advanced video ecosystem is highly fragmented, confusing for a lot of clients, um, and that in conjunction with what's happening in the linear world with ratings erosion and sub-decline and where people are spending their time, there's an opportunity to, to, to buy television and, and plan television smarter um, and also get, get the most out of data. So what we do is we have worked across the entirety of the marketplace with MVPDs, with CTV, OEMs, and now with programmers as well with their streaming assets to make sense of that for our clients. And, and what we're able to do is through consistent data and the ability to look at um, results holistically, not by partner, but across the entirety of the campaign, we're able to make our clients' dollars work harder um, to reach the same or better result. And that's really the premise of PMX Lift, and we're continuing to innovate and invest there and thinking about how do we take what we've done in advanced video to streaming audio, to local video, and continue to grow that ecosystem. When you talk about data-led, my mind goes towards uh, performance and retargeting, things from the, from the digital world. How much of television advertising is really headed in that direction, at least right now? Uh, I would say there's some clients there, but it's, it's challenging for a variety of reasons. There's the economics, the cost of buying premium video, whether that's streamed or linear, is quite expensive relative to a banner ad. And those results are typically compared to either banner or uh, online video, and the math just doesn't work as well. So when I say data-led television, it's typically audience-based targeting, different type of measurement, could be sales lift, could be um, brand lift, but something that you're actually able to say, okay, this household or this individual received an ad, took an action, and we're able to measure that different than I reached X number of people between a certain demographic based on a 40,000 person sample. So that's what, that when we say data, led video and television, that's more what we're talking about. Now, shifting gears, the, where, where there's a real connection between data-driven advertising and transactions is retail media. It's a crowded space, a lot of attention. What are you seeing there in terms of trends with, are we, are we heading towards plenty of players succeeding or will there eventually be some consolidation with the big guys? It's a great question. Retail media is certainly one of the hottest topics and most written about and talked about in the industry. A lot of money has moved or has appeared to move there. I think you know, some of that is um, left pocket, right pocket from shopper and, and circular money and in-store money to now digital shelf, if you will, which is great and, and it's very ROI centric. Um, most of retail media today is sponsored search still and most of it's controlled by two players in Walmart and Amazon. Now, as the rest of that pie, people try and grab the rest of that pie, I think a lot of these headlines are being driven. That said, there's innovation that is happening in that space. We're excited about it. And the ability to take data off of those owned platforms and find consumers in relevant places where they're more likely to have a transaction occur is really interesting. So examples of that are in streaming video with the ability to use retail media segments to target certain households that may be in market or frequent shoppers or what have you. Another one that we're looking at is an audio and that last mile between someone being in their car, being within a certain radius of a store and being able to be targeted with an ad and take an action. That's really cool and something that we're, we're innovating with our own stack with Epsilon and, and PMX as well as partners um, that are in that space. There has been talk for years about bringing, about bringing shopping to television in a bigger way through advertising. There's a, companies like Amazon are pushing it, Walmart's experimenting, but there's, there's some challenges. What are you seeing there and what, about, what kind of potential should we look for? Yeah, I think that some of the challenge is who will do what with their data, what are, what are they allowed to? I think the overarching privacy regulatory landscape, obviously that's highly influential on what happens or what doesn't happen, and a lot of brands and partners are somewhat um, uh, more guarded in that, in that regard because of it. Um, but the sort of QR codes and the ability to have a shoppable video experience exists in certain pockets. It's mostly testing today. Amazon with Thursday Night Football and some of the stuff they're doing there has been pretty big. Um, but I think the ability to have that closed loop ecosystem with a, a targeted message driving a result, even if someone's then sitting on their phone and, and I know my own behavior, I'm more likely to see an ad, search for it, and then buy it versus like 
interact with the actual creative, maybe at some point. But I think that the reality is the consumer behavior is more the latter than the former. And we're just at the beginning of this. So um, as cookies go away and there's less rich data sets, retail media and, and purchase behavior is going to be one of them. Um, and we're excited to see where that can uh, go throughout the ecosystem. Lastly, you mentioned regulation. That, that's mostly the conversation's mostly been about the big tech guys and identifying people in the open web, but should television be taking a more active role in being in setting ourselves up to be ready for regulation in terms of personal data? Um, I don't know, not my you know, deepest area of expertise, so I don't want to speak out of turn. I would say that generally though, the way that television is delivered, you know, still through mostly a third party device or you know, household IP different than third party cookies on the open web. Third party cookies are obviously going away really soon and that's um, way more ripe for disruption because there's a lot of people that quite frankly didn't know what they were opting into for a long time. In the television world, I think you know if, if you download a new streaming service, it's pretty clear if you're opting in to targeted advertising or not. So I, I do think from that regard, the, the programmers have taken it quite seriously. Um, we'll see what happens if IPs start getting blocked as well. But I, it, it's a different medium. It's, a, it's still, even though it is more targeted, it's still more of a one-to-many approach than the, the, the very bottom of the funnel. That's the broader programmatic ecosystem. So we'll see, it'll, it'll evolve. But I think for now, just being more overt with opt-in and all the things that Apple are driving their um, app and, and developer partners to do is, is a good approach. And we want to be more conservative. Um, especially on a bigger screen where you have the ability to influence more people.